two-point margin of victory, the third large... You heard that right, folks. 50 freaking two. This is the second biggest ass whooping that the Dubs experienced under the Steph Curry era. And as expected, the people on the internet went bananas over this shocking outcome. With some guys saying stuff like, this wasn't a game of basketball, this was harassment. Someone called the police and the FBI. The entire Warriors team just got massacred on national TV. And here's my personal favorite. Straight child abuse this game here, followed by three crying emojis. Now, while it's true that the Golden State Warriors bent over and got a spanking of a lifetime coming from the heavy hands of the Beantown boys, to me, what happened with the Doves is just something that you would typically see in the movies. I mean, the hero would always get beat down by the bad guy at first, before they would swing for the fences and have a big comeback in the end. So, you see, I'm not really worried about the Doves like most people because this is just a small bump in the road in the Warriors' grand redemption story. And uh, to be quite honest, I'm actually more worried about the upcoming teams that they're going to face. Because if there's one thing that history teaches us, then it's the fact that the Warriors are going to be out for blood right after tasting a soul-crushing defeat. Now, before we take a full dive of this defeat, let's rewind a bit and take a look at what happened leading up to this modern-day basketball massacre. This past Thursday, the Warriors squared off against the Knicks at the hallowed ground of Madison Square Garden, with the main attraction here being the point guard matchup between Chef Curry and the man donning the dreads, Jalen Brunson. The two teams delivered an absolute spectacle inside the world's most famous arena, but right from the get-go, the world's greatest shooter was the one who stole the show by raining down three-point bombs left and right to shell-shock the Knicks. Curry went full human torch mode and flat-out lit the scoreboard by going 8 for 18 from downtown while racking up a 31-piece. However, though, his counterpart didn't take this one sitting, as Brunson tallied 27-5-5, Yet, despite his Superman type of effort, the Dubs had the ultimate kryptonite to neutralize Brunson that goes by the name of Jonathan Kaminga. I mean, just check out how JK bullied Brunson here as if he's just a high school hooper. And as Brunson was about to lay it in here, JK once again stormed out of nowhere to spike his attempt all the way to the first row. This man-child spewed 25 points 8 rebounds on 12 of 19 shooting from the field while registering a plus 19 throughout the game. And with all cylinders clicking for the dubs that night, they easily wrapped things up at the Big Apple, 99-110. to 110. However, their smooth sailing passage in New York took a sudden turn and became a nightmare when their flight that was supposed to take them to Toronto was delayed for several hours due to mechanical issues on the plane that they were about to board. After it got fixed, it's been reported that the Dubs didn't land until after 6 a.m. and they didn't get to their hotel until after 7 a.m. The Dubs have a scheduled matchup against the Raptors that same evening at 7.30. I mean, if I were Stephen Dubs, I could have just stayed in bed and asked the NBA to cancel the game. But no, that's not what happened, because after a short time of rest, the Dubs got out of bed and suited up like a real pro team and slugged it out against the Raptors at 50% energy. Now, the lack of sleep has clearly surfaced early on, as the Raptors finished the quarter being on top 31-28, with Curry and Moody being the only guys who've been productive right from the tip-off. However, when the second quarter came, Kaminga woke up and punched in 13 markers to keep the game close at halftime, and in the third, the Dubs followed up JK's effort by doing their typical third-quarter rampage to outscore the Raptors 32-19, and apparently, that was way more than enough to put this game to bed. Despite the jet lag and the lack of time to get proper rest, the Warriors overpowered the Toronto Raptors and came away with a 15-point victory, with Steph leading the pack with 25, followed by JK who had 24 of his own, while Clay, Moody, and CP3 chipped in double digits in terms of scoring. Anyway, after overcoming all the odds, a familiar foe awaited them at the TD Garden when the Dubs faced the league-leading Boston Celtics. Now, just a bit of context here. Entering this game, the Dubs were playing their seventh game in the span of 10 days, including two back-to-backs 
with almost no sleep in between their second back-to-backs. So, you kind of have an idea already where this is heading. And to add on to these factors, the dub's main guy was actually listed as questionable initially with a right knee bursitis, before he was cleared just a few hours before tip-off. Meanwhile, the Celtics, on the other hand, were smoking hot and steamrolling the competition leading up to their face-off against the Warriors by riding a 10-game winning streak momentum. Anyway, as expected, everyone looked visibly fatigued in the first quarter, especially Steph, who moves like his superpowers were taken away by the Monstars in Space Jam as he was bricking his shots left and right. The Celtics, on the other hand, maxed out their sliders to the brim and hardly missed any shots, with Jalen Brown racking up 29 points in just 22 minutes and Jason Tatum scoring 27 points in 25 minutes of play. And by halftime, the game was basically over with the score so lopsided that I needed a calculator just to compute the deficit. Anyway, kidding aside, I have to give the Celtics their due on this one. I mean, they came in prepared and they just ripped the Warriors' heart out and stomped it to pieces. But see, as I mentioned earlier, there were a lot of factors that contributed to this humiliating defeat. And to quickly sum it up, I think the best team in the NBA just caught the Warriors on their worst day. This was just one loss out of the hundreds of losses that the Doves had throughout their great run. So for me, this is not yet the time to sound the alarm bells. I mean, just look at how calm Steve Kerr reacted when reporters asked him about whether he should be worried about the Doves' current state. Uh, I mean, is, is this, like, are you concerned about this type of no. performance? Or... No. So this is a, this, you flush a toilet. Uh, we had a great road trip, three and one. Uh, we've had a million games. Um, when Boston was amazing. We weren't beating them today. Um, and um, so we head home and uh, get ready for Wednesday. Okay, so let's follow up what Kerr said and talk about the Wednesday game against the Bucks. And I don't want to say I told you so, but I told you so. See, despite Giannis's return, the Warriors had their bloody revenge on the Bucks, blowing them out by 35 points and holding them down to just nine points in the fourth quarter. The Dubs were simply on target on both ends of the floor. But the real X factor in this game were the young guns as they showed that they're ready to take over. I mean, Kaminga was clearing the runway early on to showcase his hops. Harassed by two defenders, Wiggins the deflection. Majemski pushes him, one man to beat, throws it back for Kaminga. TJB was completely owning Giannis on multiple occasions. But an adjustment, another impressive rookie for the Warriors starting to get more minutes. Oh, oh what a block! From Jackson, they yeah, and the Warriors have responded. They've responded in a big way. Now, let's take note that they just didn't beat any fluke of a team. They beat a red-hot Bucks team who won their last six games. And just like that, folks, everyone already forgot about the 52-point beatdown as they're now back to their winning ways. And if we're going to take a look at their upcoming schedule, it looks like the Dubs are going to be winning some more games with Chicago in their crosshairs next, followed by back-to-back -back games against the San Antonio Spurs. Anyway, with this being said, do you think they can keep up this momentum leading to the playoffs? Let me know your thoughts on this by putting your comments below. And until then, see you in the next video.